Hey everybody, it's Dr. J, and today we are talking about integrated rate laws. So, let's talk about some chemistry here. Um, integrated rate laws, if you forgot, basically this is where we're about to talk about concentration, and we're still relating it to time. So when we look here, right, uh, this is the rate law, of course, right, concentration over time, but this is not integrated, okay? Uh, so basically what I want to let you guys understand, right? Go back to this slide. Uh, we have our two different types of rate laws, right? Differential rate law, which is going to tell us how rate changes with concentration, i.e. this right here. And then that's mainly what we're, we, we've been covering and what we're going to continue to cover. But we also have integrated rate law. So in a, integrated rate law is very, very cool. Um, as far as it's basically going to let us tell the concentration as far as how it relates to that time. So when we're talking about integrated rate law, we're going to talk about zero order, first order, and second order. Uh, we're going to talk about first order first. Okay. So a couple of things we must point out, right? That we understand integrated rate law is a concentration with the dependence of time. Okay. So integrated. Basically, we just want to talk about a couple of different things. So this integration is actually calculus, all right? Um, it's a calculus operation. Uh, we're not going to go too deep on how everything is derived uh, just because, you know, this is not a math class, okay? So I'll, we're here to basically make sure that you know, right, what is integrated rate law and then how you can use it, right? We're not worried about that math as far as how it's derived. Okay, if you want to learn that, you know, that's perfectly fine. Let me know in the comments. We could talk about it. But um, we just focus on using the integrated rate law. Okay. All right. So integration of the first order rate law, right, is this here. Okay. So this is our integrated rate law. So a lot different from our uh, other rate law that we used before. And we can see that we're going to have our natural log of A. So once again, this is A is the concentration equals to our K. We talked about K being that rate constant. And then this T in this case is time. And then we're going to add this together with once again, another natural log. And then we have our concentration. And this zero basically means that we have our initial concentration. Okay. So this is how much we started off with. Okay. And then this is equation we're using for first order rate law. Okay. So um, basically, we understand, right, that these two different types of rate laws are going to be connected. OK, so basically, if we know this integrated rate law, then we are able to use that, right, to help us find our rate law for our differential rate law, OK, as we mentioned up here. OK, and, on, and like I mentioned, like I'm mentioning once again, uh, if you see something with the zero, this is just initial concentration. K, we know it's going to be our rate constant. And because we know these couple of things here, right, if you know the initial of something and if you know your rate constant, along with the time, of course, right, now, now we could calculate our concentration depending on how much time has passed by. And this is what's great about integrated rate laws, okay? So we couldn't do that before, right, with these type of equations. We can't do that at all. But with the integrated rate law, we can definitely do that either by finding it or even plotting that data. Exactly as I mentioned, that's the reason why integrated rate law is a little bit more helpful. All right, because it's just helping us, right, relate time and our concentration together. And before, we really haven't been able to do that, right? If I have an initial concentration and a time and a rate constant, I couldn't be able to find whatever my concentration is at that given time. This is a great thing with integrated laws, okay, integrated rate laws, okay? So we mentioned integrated rate laws for first order will look like this. It's always going to look like this. You got your natural log times the concentration equals your negative K rate constant times your time, right, plus your natural log of your initial condition. So this, this integrated rate law can be related to what do you know? Y equals MX plus B, right? We definitely seen that, or you should have at least have um, in your previous math classes. If not, basically this is just a linear plot, all right? This is all it is. This is the 
straight line thing. Okay, basically, y'all remember that in class? It's a straight line thing. That's what this is here. So, um, because of this, right, of how this is relating, right, our L and A, all right, can be basically our Y, all right, so we could plot this data on our Y axis. So, this is very important to where, you know, you can have this data plotted on the graph and use your integrated array law in that way. Um, so, this is our Y, and then our T in this case will be our X axis, okay, so it's going to be our X axis. And then, um, of course, we have our M and being the rate constant. And then our Y-intercept. Y'all remember the Y-intercept? Uh, well, if we relate that to the rate law, that's going to be uh, this right here, our uh, natural log of our initial uh, concentration. So basically, if we plot this line, we're going to get something like this. All right. So basically, uh, you should always expect to see your line going down right when your initial concentration right your natural log of your initial concentration is on your y-axis and when your time is on your x-axis all right so anytime you have these two things as your y and x your slope will always go down right you're going to have a negative k so that's our slope you're always going to have a negative k value negative slope for all first order reactions Okay, it's always going to be the case here. And if it's not, right, if it's not the case, then you don't have first order. That's not a first order reaction. Okay, you have something totally else. Okay. And, um, you know, just looking at data, for instance, if we got our dinitrogen pentaoxide making our uh, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen here, right, uh, we can plot this data. All right, we got our time. Right, we can plot our data. We can, we got the time, um, and then we have our ln of our concentration. So now we got our y, okay, and then we can just plot everything else. Ln concentration over time. We plot our data points. Bam, 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 and then we're able to determine our concentration here, right, based on that uh, the plot here, okay. All right, so let's talk about half-lives. Um, so we're first going to talk about half-lives of first order because we're still talking about first order reactions here. So we can actually take that integrated array law, as we mentioned before, and rearrange it right to this little form here. All right, ln of our initial concentration over concentration of A equals KT. All right. Now, um, if we relate this, right, the half-life of a reaction will equal the time it takes for our concentration to equal half of that, all right? So basically that's it, right? Half-life is like, it's decaying and then it's half that life, all right? All right, half that time. So we look here, right? Um, this little, this little uh, plot is gonna tell us everything. For a first order reaction, the half-life is constant and independent of concentration. So let's look here. Uh, we got our concentration of our whatever we have in this case, and it's at the initial concentration. All right, we see here the, the little initial concentration, at, uh, in this case, one molar. And then over time, right, after the very first half-life, we're gonna notice that now, right, that concentration of one molar has decreased to half of it, 0.5, all right? Literally half-life is like it's decreasing by half. That's all it is over time, all right? And then if we, go once again, right? And let's say we go to this mark, we're gonna see that it's decreased once again, the half-life 0.5 to 0.25. And then if we do it again, right, half of this, now we're at a uh, half of 0.25, okay? And then we can see, right, our concentration has decreased uh, tremendously, all right? And then notice, right, our half lives are staying the same. In this case, it took 100 seconds for my first half-life, took another 100 seconds for another half-life, so that it's not going to change in this case, right? So we want to understand that half the time, right, half-life, half the amount. As I mentioned right in that example, this is it just summed up, basically. 100 seconds each is half the life, right? We went from uh, half of it each time, each time, each time, all right, as we see here. And now, one thing we've got to point out, though, with first order, this is it's a little different for each of these as we'll go on. Half-life does not depend on concentration 
for a first order reaction. Once again, half life does not depend on the concentration for a first order reaction. That's key, first order. So a cheat code is that what we have here. Okay, so we had the integrated rate law. You know, we rewrote it as this. And then we talked about how, well, half life, if, if we want to talk about half life, well, it was going to look like this. It's a lot of math. Okay. A lot of math is going on here. And this is why I say, you know, we're not focused on how we're deriving it, right? And this is what, this is how we're going to derive it. But let's just focus on how we're going to use it, right? So in this case, if you need to find a half-life for first order reactions, you're going to just use this equation here, right? Half-life equals 0.693 over K. Look how simple that is compared to this, okay? Which this can still help me find the half-life, but look at what I'm going to have to do. Look at what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to use natural log, two concentrations, and then I'm going to have to solve at the end of the day for a variety of different things. If I focus right on using this equation, once again for first order, I could just do 0.693 divided by K. That's it. So definitely take notes, uh, write that equation down for sure. Okay, so next we have uh, the integrated rate law for second order reactions. Okay, so like I mentioned before, all of this is kinetics, okay? In this case, we're focused on reactants going to products. And we understand, right, we've looked at the concentration over time, right? In this case, this is the differential rate law. So this is basically rate equals to our K and then concentration squared, okay? But let's relate this to our integrated rate law, okay? So we understand that Integrated rate law is basically concentration depending on time. And because of this, this is how this is going to be written here. So the second order integrated rate law is one over the concentration of A, in this case our reactant, right, equals to K times time plus one over the initial concentration. All right, so this is very different from the first order. That's what we need to understand. Each order is going to have a different integrated form, okay? Now, what we need to realize, right, is that we can also plot this data as we did before, right? And in, in this case, notice when we have to plot data for second order rate loss, we plot it like this. Time still being on the X, but now we change what's on our Y axis, okay? In this case, on the Y axis, it's going to be our one over our concentration. So different, right, from the previous example. So we have one over concentration, right, time on our x, okay, and then if we need to do our straight line, we understand that this is our y, right, as we see here. This is my x, as I see here, and then my slope is still going to be k. And in this case, our slope for second order rate loss will be positive. So expect to see a positive K or slope for all second orders, all right, anytime you plot your data. And then, of course, our Y-intercept in this case is going to be our 1 over initial concentration, right? So because, right, we have this new form, rewritten uh, form here, our data will be different as well. All right, so once again, half-life is depending on concentration. We understand that this is second order, right? We do our math. Like I said, we're not focused on how we're doing the math. Let's just focus on that final equation here, right? So we understand for second order, we need to know that, well, if we have second order reactions relating it to half-life, then every half-life will be twice as long as the previous one. That's the key thing about second orders. So in this case, we're just going to use this equation. 1 over k, so notice how it's different from before, right? Because before we had that 0.693 divided by k for first order, not the case here, right? So it's 1 over k times our initial condition, right, of our uh, concentration. So this is the half-life equation for our second order reaction. And then lastly, we're going to talk about zero order, all right, zero order rate loss. Okay, um, so some rate loss, in this case, um, some reactions 
uh, will not depend on concentration. Okay, it does not depend on concentration. Now, it's a variety of different reasons, but one reaction is basically if you have a reaction that's on the surface. For example, uh, say we have this platinum here. Uh, it reacts with the reactants in this case, uh, N2O, gives me nitrogen and oxide. So as the catalyst here reacts with those reactants, all right, once the space is full, right, uh, even these extra leftover reactants will not help, right, towards the production of more products, all right? So it's not necessarily going to be dependent on a concentration, all right? So it's, it's different in that case, okay? It's different. So this is how we're going to write our zero order integrated rate law, right? Which is this case. No, this is different. Once again, we need to understand that for dim differential rate laws, right, it's always going to be the same. Concentration over time, and then rate equals K times our concentration. In this case, it's zero, so it's just really rate equals K for zero orders. But this is always how di differential rate law is always going to be written, right, just in this manner. Now, it's always going to be different when we're talking about integrated rate laws, which in this case, the integrated rate law for zero orders are our concentration of A equals our negative K times our time plus, notice how this time, we just have our initial concentration. We don't have no natural logs. We don't have none of that, okay, for this zero order rate law, okay? So just like the other ones, we can plot this data, right? We're going to plot this data uh, and when we go to plot this data, it's still related to y equals mx plus b. If we need to plot it on a straight linear graph. So we're going to have our, uh, in this case, our y is going to be my concentration. Bam. And then my x is still the time. And then our slope is still going to be negative k. So hint, this is the reason why we have that negative slope for our zero orders here. And then, right, um, I got to talk about half-life, okay? So let's talk about half-life real fast. Um, oh, before we go there, um, intercepts. Uh, it's still the same thing. Like, everything is literally Y, M, X, B, right? Y equals M, X plus B. That's all it is. Now, half-life for zero order, right? We have our integrated rate loss. We're going to rearrange it, right, doing that whole math stuff. This is our final equation for our integrated, uh, for our half-lives when it comes to zero order. We're going to have our initial concentration over 2K. Shout out to 2K, man. All right. Now, uh, we got our concentration over 2K. This is our half-life for zero orders. And we're always going to use this equation for zero orders. All right. All right.